Tom Harlock here, joined by Terry Layton, the WA expert. Terry, how are you, great man? Very, uh, very well, Tom. How are you? Of course. So pump for the races over in the West, and that's why we've got you on. We've got the Quokka headlining the meeting of $5 million. It was a huge success last year with turnover skyrocketing. We've also got the Karakata and the Joey, is it? Um, huge meeting over there, mate. But is it is it a, a big hype meeting? Is there a bit of media around the Quokka these days? Yeah, mate, it's uh, it's huge. I'm I'm personally very excited about the day. It's a um, 11.19 a.m. kickoff for us, so it's a bit of snap, crackle, and punt, uh, as Richie Callender would say, which we don't often uh, we don't often get over in the West. So, no, very excited. The coverage, uh, Channel 10's all over it. Um, yeah, the coverage basically on any platform you look is is big. I mean, the railway stakes and the, the November carnival and the summer carnival is probably, in my mind, still the pinnacle of racing in Western Australia. But those races are worth one and a half million each. This is worth five million. So it's it's arguably the biggest week in racing in Western Australia, I'd say. And we're going to get 31 degrees, a light easterly. The rail's at a pretty fair position. We can touch on that a little bit later. But, um, yeah, everything lines up for a near repeat of last year's performance, including the runners. Yeah, a very similar feel. We'll touch on that. But uh, to start with the track, because we've got a few, we've got a 10-race program. Uh, how is it going to play? You just touched on it then. Yeah, it's been a bit dodgy uh, at the true and three metre positions, and we're at three metres on uh, on Saturday, so it's probably a bit less prominent at three metres than it is at true. Um, but I'm a little wary. Our Scott in the past would be if you get an easterly in play, you've got the rail near the true position, you very simply um, be able to do your speed maps, find reasonably strong leaders that are going to kick and you'd be on the winner half the time. But that's just not the case anymore. The rail is probably playing inferior a length or two. Um, and that has to come into your thought process um, a fair bit. And in particularly for the Karakata out of the three features, um, that's the race. I think it'll be the biggest talking point and probably the most important uh, thing to just pay attention to uh, as the meeting goes on, because if that fence does look dodgy, the favourite is going to be in a potential world of hurt from that gate. Fascinating. Well, let's start off with the $5 million Quokka, Quokka 1,200 metres. The speed map looks fascinating. We had a bit of a chat yesterday as well about that when the barriers came out. Um, what do you make of it? Malkovich is airborne at the moment, racing right up on speed and at his best when he goes really quickly. We've got Oscar's Fortune, who had a nice card into the race, sitting just behind the leader last start. We've got a whitey class as well, out wide, pushing over. Who, Who's the, the benefited uh, runner from the, the draw, but what do you make of the speed and the tempo? Oh, it's it's a race I really like uh, the shape of in regards to how obvious it looks on paper. I should never say that because the moment you say that, it doesn't work out that way. But, I mean, as you said, Malkovich is going to lead and obviously being uh, stable mates, so there'll be a, a plan there to some degree. I'd say Malkovich leads uh, over past Lands in the Breeze. Oscar's Fortune is the biggest winner from the barrier draw by a country mile. Willie Pike can choose the back he wants. I presume he'll choose the back of Overpass. Um, and he can he can even stay on Overpass's back for a portion of the straight if he wants. Like if you, because Overpass, Oscar's Fortune, uh, Amelia's Jewel last year's Quokka, they've all met in, in different points in time. You can compare the runs and see what each horse needs to sort of turn the tables on the other. And Overpass beat Oscar's Fortune fair and square in last year's Winterbottom Stakes, but Oscar's Fortune had the back of a horse called Man Crush, who probably went around 200 to 1, was going backwards in the three wide line, and Overpass won that race between the 400 and the 200. I think Oscar's Fortune can turn the tables on Overpass just, just, um, if the map works out as it looks to on paper, and you've got Pikey sitting right on Josh Parr's back. So it's, um, yeah, it's fascinating. The big loser from the barrier draw on the surface looks to be Amelia's Jewel. Um, had Amelia's Jewel drawn a good alley, I reckon I would have been happy to take $2.40, $2.50 type thing. I think she's the best horse in this, um, but we're not trying to back the best horse. We're trying to back the winner of this horse race. And it just looks sticky for her. If, if Damien Lane gives her a 10, I reckon she'll win. But what price do you need for Damien Lane to give her a 10? That's probably the big question. So, so where does she get to from, from that awkward draw? Because Damien Lane well, does, just mentioned... does like to settle closer. Um, we've seen him do this on Amelia's draw in the past, Terry. So, um, yeah, well, where does she get to? Yeah, 100%. It's it's fascinating in regards to, the, to that aspect that Damien is probably slightly more aggressive. And I think that will suit her to some degree. But 
I mean, the map to me looks pretty obvious in regards to, I think Ripcord can hold the back of Oscar's Fortune. Uh, King of Sparta probably ends up on the fence. One of those will be in the other position. The spot on the back of Ripcord, I, I think with Almighty Class, well, I know with Almighty Class, they actually want um, him to be ridden a little bit quieter. They don't want to be that far forward. So look for Almighty Class to look for the back of Ripcord or King of Sparta, whoever's in the three out one back position. Um, and then you've got Wild Bell, who's a stable mate of Ripcord. I, I, I think some of Wild Bell's best runs um, have been when ridden quieter. Like I, I can't see a huge benefit in, in pushing forward get, and being the one that gets caught deep and being the one that maybe carts Amelia's jewel into it. So if Wild Bell is ridden a little bit quieter, I can't see where the spot is for Amelia's jewel, if that makes sense. Can she sit three deck, no cover and beat him? Maybe she's really good, but I mean, it's there is a lot of moving parts and a lot needs to go right uh, for Amelia's Jewel, especially considering overpass or breeze exactly as last year, but probably on a more, I won't say sedate tempo, um, but probably just a little bit more simpler map wise. There isn't a third speed horse like we had Man Crush last year, and then you've got Oscar's Fortune is going to get every conceivable from right behind him. Uh, mate, that's the fascinating part of this horse race. You just mentioned Almighty Class uh, before. And potentially going forward. I know for a fact that they're going to want to ride that horse with a bit of cover. Um, so I think he will look for the back of Ripcord or King of Sparta in the four back one out position. Uh, as you can tell with my speed maps, I try to, I think with a map like this, you can actually almost map it to the horse to some degree, which I, I just love to do because once you've got a reliable or a map you're confident in, you can then just back the horse you think wins from that position on ability. Um, so from there, um, You've got Wild Bell, and that's the horse that Damien Lang will hope tries to push forward, lands three deep no, um, and takes um, and takes uh, Damien and Amelia's jewel into the race. But I think some of Wild Bell's best runs have been ridden cold. And we also need to remember there's huge prize money on offer for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. There's like there's really big numbers on offer for those positions. So do you want to push forward, cook your horse, and, and potentially um, run 12th and, and miss out on those extra few bucks as well? So I, I think Wild Bell's best chance of finishing closer to them um, is to be ridden quieter, which means if Damien goes forward, I can't see a spot um, for her, but um, that can change very easy. If, if Almighty Class or Wild Bell get caught deep, that's the key, I think. One of them to take her into the race. Fantastic. Uh, great insight there. King of Sparta, you mentioned Oscar's Fortunes, beneficiary of the, the barrier. Uh, King of Sparta looks to map perfectly and, and suck in. Get that nice run from a good barrier there. Let's get to who you're tipping on top, Terry, in the $5 million corker. Who do you like? Oh, purely from a speed map point of view and the fact that Pikey and Oscar's Fortune will be following overpass everywhere they go. I think they would have just about dead heated in the winter bottom. I'd say Oscar's Fortune's come forward as a horse watching his performance in the Roma Cup. Um, and the fact we're getting each way, I'm not usually an each way player at sort of $2.20 or uh, whatever it is around that mark, but she hasn't missed, um, he, sorry, hasn't missed a, a top two finish in his eight start career. And the map is just that good. You'd think the place price is probably realistically $1.60, $1.70. So at $2.20, I don't want to see Amelia's Jewel beat me, who I think is the best horse, and then feel like a bit of a goose when Oscars run second or third and, and they sort of clear out a little bit from the rest. So at $6.220, um, I think that'll stay stable on Betfair. There'll be bigger money, Amelia's Jewel. Um, there'll be money for uh, overpass without doubt. King of Sparta will be very firm in the market. It's it's the horse that I don't have a huge read on, not being a big Eastern States punter, um, but doing the replays, having a look at some numbers. Um, it, it looks very similar to Oscar's Fortune um, in that sense, and maps probably on the back of Oscar's Fortune or very close to it. Um, but I suspect the whole way through betting, we'll see sort of between five fifty and $7 each way, Oscar's Fortune, and that's me. It'll be an amazing betting race at betfair.com.au. Uh, yeah, King of Sparta is a fascinating runner. I don't think his best runs are as good as your overpass, Millie's Jewel, even Bella Nipatina, and you see that on the ratings as well, but he does get the map. Same with Oscar's Fortune. It's hard to, to go off that first up run by Millie's Jewel and say, how does Oscar's Fortune actually hold out and hold off Millie's Jewel? With the extra run on the belt now, up to 1,200 metres, all things being equal, you'd have to say that Millie's Jewel is the better horse and, and the horse that can can win this, but the speed map, as you've uh, eloquently put, and, and that's a huge amount of interest in this race, Terry. So, um, geez, it's a tricky I don't think race. I eloquently put anything ever in anything in my life, I reckon. So that, that's a first for me. Described it perfectly, mate. Um, 
What do you make of overpass? Are you backing or laying overpass? Um, uh, right I, price, mate. So what I tossed up with um, yes. with my play was either was I going to back Oscar's fortune and say overpass or was I going to back Oscar's fortune each way? But my to be honest, and, and I, I don't punt on gut, I punt on speed maps and, and the form I do. I think Amelia's jewel. I think Damien Lane will, will find the right run. I just you get the feeling there will be redemption for Amelia's jewel on, on Simon Miller's on her last start, sorry, for Simon Miller. But I can't I can't bet on on gut or maybe not a desire <laughs> to win, but I, I I have to look at the speed map. I have to look at how the race shapes out, and it just looks really really ugly. So um, the reason I've gone with the each way instead of the saving on overpass is because I think Amelia's jewel is the knockout. If I thought it was just a clear cut second pick in overpass, that would be the play instead. Um, but I don't want to feel like a ghost when Amelia's jewel knocks me off. And as I said, Oscar's run second or third, so I'm pretty happy with the play. Massive one for the in play traders. I know you don't do any of that. Oh, but, um, 100% it would be. Yeah, hundred percent would be. It'd be a great race for it. I, I I'm not quick enough at all. Got my new phone, Tommy, which I've showed you before, <laughs> which you're pretty excited about the old Z fold. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I'll need to learn a little bit more about the in play betting because this is the perfect race for it. With such an obvious speed map. Fascinating race, the Quokka. Good luck, Terry. Is with number ten. Oscar's fortune each way there in race eight. We'll go back a race to the Karakata Plate. Two-year-olds over 1,200 metres. Who are you with here? Uh, I'm going to decide on the day. I'm going to be pretty fluid here. I'm, I'm happy for Betfair to point me in the right direction. I'm happy to see how that inside pad plays. Uh, your favourite bustling. And the boys, they ran such um, a stronger time than the girls did uh, two weeks ago in the major lead-ups to the Karakata. So that does make me think bustling is probably the best horse in this race. I'll touch on that comment in one second. But from barrier one, it's really interesting because he's a little bit of a slow stepper and he's drawn wide or been able to muster to the breeze or lead in all of his starts to date. So from barrier one, you know this, uh, this, the same colours, the same owners, Blue Rocket's going to cross him. If another one crosses, you end up three the fence or even alternatively, you really bustle him out um, as per his name and uh, you hold the back of Blue Rocket. How much are you cooking the horse early to hold that position when you're going to have Golden Kathleen and Siren Assault and those types coming at you late? So I'm, I'm fascinated if the inside pad, what would make it easy for me is the inside pad to show signs of that deterioration I am expecting and uh, we usually get. If that's the case, I'm, I'm going to be looking around Golden Kathleen and Siren Assault as my plays. Um, Golden Kathleen, while I said bustling is probably the best horse in the race, Golden Kathleen could be the best horse in the race. And William Pike going on a horse of this nature who will be ridden quietly in a race with a very hot speed map, um, I'm expecting her to explode late. So for a tip right now, it's Golden Kathleen. Um, but I'm going to just make my decision on the day and see how it's all uh, panning out track-wise. Just uh, one thing, I noticed Shin goes on bustling there and his really, a really good strength of his is actually getting horses out of the barrier, Terry. So okay. go back and have a look at some replays of Shin. He gets them to jump really well. So maybe that plays into um, bustling's hands and advantage from barrier one, but the, the track, obviously, a key point of that. Well, what will be really interesting to watch is, as I said, the same owner has got Blue Rocket who will lead the race. And if it's a big on-pace day, Blue Rocket will start way over the odds for the horses run the quickest 1,000 metre time of the whole two-year-old season. Um, but it will be very interesting um, what instructions were given. Was it to go very hard and string them out the hole? Was it to go a little bit slower? And obviously they won't be laying off the fence on purpose to let the favourite through. Obviously not. That. That's not what I'm saying, Tommy, but uh, it's fascinating it's that... Whistle. It's fascinating. Yeah, exactly right. It's fascinating you'll have a $50 pop uh, in front of a $2.50 pop with the same owners. It's it's just a, just a story within a story, I think. Love that. I'd love that. Uh, let's get to the Joey $200,000 race. Um, interesting race, as usual. A lot of horses that you know really well, Terry. Have you got a tip for us here, or how are you playing the race? Again, I'm going to stay fluid-ish here. I narrowed it down to five chances the market semi agrees with me one thing i will say i i might get this a bit wrong i think last i looked it was 16 17 dollars i reckon search and rocks will start in your favorite that's I, I think this market what they've done is there is one person for tab touch who does the markets and everybody else has just copied and pasted this no one's put their own spin on it no one's done their own opinion so this market is a very good market. Very... yeah mate he's a very good market maker don't get me wrong but this this market 
will have a lot of swings. I, I think a horse like Mood Swings, currently 19, he'll start 130 to 1. Um, I think Gemma's son, who I'm pretty keen on, I know the person in the market's also pretty keen on it, $7, I reckon we'll see 14 late. So I, I find it hard to tip you Gemma's son at the moment, but I'm expecting Gemma's son will double in price and we can have a bet late. But Western Empire um, is obviously the big watch horse. No idea what to expect market-wise or run-wise. Um, listening to Grant Williams' interview the other day, he just said a few of those things which concern you. He's not as sharp as he used to be. If I, if I can get him back to 80%, uh, there was just a few little lines in there that worried me, but his trial was elite and none of these are that super or going all that well. I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's that strong and joey in regards to a standout next elect. Um, then you've got Gemma Sun, who I said is a different horse at its last few starts, beat Oscar's fortune on merit um, when they met in the Bluff Knoll down in Albany. I'm expecting Sean McGrady to be more positive and he might even look for the breeze here. So that's that's the horse I'll be definitely um, having something on late is, is Gemma's son. Uh, and you have Fanta will lead and kick, just has a far better record on the wet tracks at Belmont than Ascot. Um, and laced up heels down the bottom. Chrissy Parnham, who's riding, is probably our number one rider at the moment with Pikey still recovering from injury. Um, he'll be looking for gaps to get through them and Damian Lane will be trying to ride a race from an awkward gate on Search and Rock. So they're the five that I've narrowed it down to from a winning point of view. Um, Search and Rock's the market mover. Gemma's son, probably my best result, but I'll see what the cost Lovely. Watch the market there at Betfair. Um, just before I let you go, Terry, thank you for your, your previews. Just want to ask you um, a little gem that you told me on the phone yesterday about Willie Quark, and we try to educate people at Betfair, and you noticed he's been a bit more positive since coming back from Sydney? Yeah, I think I think so. I, I think it's rubbed off uh, a little bit on him. I think there was a little bit of criticism in regards to his riding over there and his patient style, and I, I think as... Western Australian partners and, and growing up and always having Pikey here, we are quite forgiving when he rides one patiently and gets one beaten because we're aware for everyone he gets beaten, he gets two winners up that otherwise wouldn't have won the race. You know, we see jockeys take off and we love to see them put horses into the race. But the reason Pikey often will win is his patience and saving him up for that short, sharp sprint. But I think he has changed a little bit. And I think it's for the better as well. Um, in be saying that, I was, hey. That was going to be my next question. Oh, yeah, I think it is for the better. I think at times he rode every horse as if they were robots and they were the exact same horse. I think now he's a little bit more selective and understanding who he's on. Okay, this horse doesn't have the same turn of foot. It would be probably a little silly to ride as cold. Um, so I, I think it's for the better in saying that. Um, I was pretty keen on Bucket Switch in the Derby and he didn't pull the trigger early enough then when I wanted him to go. So he's, uh, he's done the opposite there. But in general, yeah, I think he's... Um, I think he's, I think that's probably an improvement in his riding in all fairness. And there was very little he had to improve on. There you go. Good summary there. Terry, thanks for joining me, mate. Best of luck for the Quokka. What a good race it is. And what a, it's a great concept by Racing WA. And turnover on the race last year was huge. So good luck. Find a winner. That's the most important thing. 100%. Pleasure, Tommy. You have a good one. Thanks, mate. All the best. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.